Yeah, you know who it is. You know who it is. If you don't, it's your boy G. So what up, 2K fans? A lot of you guys were asking me to do an attribute and animations update. And I want to share that with you guys. I know a lot of last time I did anything like this, I, I didn't show you guys my gym. Um, some of you guys know I was in the military, and so this kind of takes it back home. I kind of like that indigenous look or that, that forest or wilderness look anyway. And I may change this down the road, but this is just how I have it for now. And yeah, you can still see my shoe collection and some of the rewards that I have with this character. But let's go ahead and take a look at my attributes. As you can see, I'm maxed out at my jumper, my athlete, my playmaker, defender, and my inside scoring. Still needs a little work. I'm definitely still playing the game. I've been playing a lot of other games, so I've been a little distracted, but 94 overall isn't too bad. 39 badges. Definitely could get a lot more. <laughs> Quick rundown of my badges. If you see anything in here you guys want me to explain, I'll do another Badge Hunter video, and we'll go ahead and, and get that out there for you guys. So just let me know. If you see anything in here that you want me to talk about, the significance of you know, because I do plan on doing more Badge Hunter videos. I just haven't decided on which one I'm going to do next. Probably going to do Corner Specialist real soon. Why that one is really important. And, um, you know, but just let me know. If there's one in here that you see that you want to definitely see me do before then or as soon as possible, let me know. I'm going to run through my animations really quickly for you guys so you know the basics. Um, you guys should know I use Carmelo Anthony's release. I haven't changed it in probably about a month or two. My release is on quick. Free throw is Kobe Bryant. And I get a lot of excellent releases. So if you're struggling with getting excellent releases from the free throw line, definitely give this one a try. These are my dunk packages. And these are what I call the dunk packages that make it a little bit more difficult to get blocked. Even though Athletic hangs off of two, tend to get blocked every now and then because he does a back scratcher animation. It's pretty rare. Straight arm Tomahawks. Uber Athletic Tomahawks off of one. Side clutches off two. This one's a very difficult animation to block. I get a lot of dunks through traffic with this animation. I love reverse dunks. Always have, always will, especially on a fast break. And also going across the baseline. Baseline clutch reverses, windmill reverses. These are all pretty nice, especially for a shooter. You know, these look real cool for a shooter. Baseline reverses off of two. I do these a lot on the park because they're really difficult to block. I mean, these are the these are some of the better animations when you're going across the baseline instead of trying to dunk it. Going beneath the rim to dunk it is a lot harder to block, and, and it, it it throws off the defenders because they they tend to jump a lot earlier because your 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 animations are delayed because you're going around to the other side of the rim. Switcheroos. I just love this, these animations. There's only like one animation in the Switcher Rules that I don't like, but pretty much all the rest of them, they're really flashy and they're very difficult to block. Windmills off of one. Leaning windmills. And I have your basic 360s, which I don't do too often, and the game just doesn't trigger those animations enough. Maybe if I take off some of my other animations, I'll be doing them more, but I don't really care. I don't really need to do a lot of 360s. I use the Jamal Crawford layup package. A lot of you guys asked me how to do this. I did do a layup tutorial that, that details how to do this, but I'll, I'll tell you real fast right here and now. If you're going towards the rim, just tap square or X on the Xbox One. If you're on PlayStation, just tap the square button or the shoot button while moving the left stick to the left or the right, depending on which side you want to cross to is the side he's going to go to. But you have to have one man to beat. You can't just do it when nobody's here like you see i'm doing it right now just because the, the ai is just doing that but you can't do that you have to have somebody there to beat for him to do these animations so so again all you do is tap square with one guy to beat you just have to have somebody you know in the lane preferably in the dunk zone and you will cross right around them and I, I i get away with this layup animation pretty much all the time after the update recently they kind of made it to where defense has a chance to actually stop this animation before that update you would really have to time it perfectly and most people think people are trying to most people think i'm gonna try to dunk on them so 
they always jump and you go right by them. I like looking like James Harden out there before the game starts. All right, my signature styles, I'm going to go through these really quickly. My contested is Steph Curry. Dribble pull up is Elite 14. Spin jumper number 12. Usually I spin in traffic like this and then I pass out of it. Currently my hop jumper is Steph Curry, but I change this every time I come to my signature style. So let's go ahead and switch it to Dante Axum for now. Let's see how this works. <laughs> post fade is Michael Jordan. My post hook is 10. I'm a point guard. I don't really need to be doing post hooks. Post hop shot is number eight. Kind of like the way he steps out of this. I use shimmy shot number two. Protect jumper number three. Step back, jump shot, buckets. My dribble posture is upright. I used to use a low dribble posture. I really don't care. I kind of used to switch it up, but recently upright, it just kind of throws people off. I don't know why I'm just getting a lot of ankle breakers like this, especially when you hit right trigger or R2, you know, when you're kind of jogging up the court and then you burst off. That upright dribble throws people off, man. It, it kind of makes it seem like you're not going to take off or try to break ankles and then you just take off. So it's pretty cool. Currently, I'm using ISO crossover number six. I kind of rotate between this one and number two. Last year, if you guys remember, I used to use crossover number 18 because of the Sham God animations. And this year, Sham God is, is whack. I don't know what 2K was thinking. Um, it could just be me, but I just haven't had much success using it. Maybe I'll go back to it once I go legend and try to bring back some of those, you know, those legendary park game plays from last year using the the sham god dribbles you also have a sham god at number 19 as well and but number 19 has a devastating crossover which that's the sham god in number 19 but that crossover you can pretty much eliminate the auto hesitation animations that come come with that you know when you do that crossover you, do, you don't tend to get any of those hesitation animations so keep that in mind some of these crossovers are are really good at avoiding those hesitation animations you know, the ones that lock you up after you get the, the ankle breaker. Then there's crossover number 21, which also has a sham guide. Um, I used to use these. Again, I don't use these often. And maybe I'll pick them up once I go legend again and, and try them out. Behind the back, number 7 is what I'm currently using. Just have a lot of fun with this animation. I also use behind the back number 1. These are my two favorite behind the backs in the game. I know a lot of guys, you know, your cheese ball package, they want to include number 14. You know, I'm not saying that this move is a cheese ball move, but when you have the total package, you know, Jamal Crawford size ups, you know, you got the LaMarcus Aldridge release, you're using speed boost glitch and you're using behind the back number 14 or hesitation number three and then guard one size up. You know, when you use the total package, I call you a cheese ball. But if you got this animation and amongst other normal animations, I don't really look at it like that. But, you know, this is not, I don't think behind the back 14 is, is a cheese ball move this year as much as it was in 2014 and 2K15. ISO spin number seven is what I'm using right now. Uh, this works great when you're, when you're doing spins out of, you know, animations. Like if you do a crossover and you want to spin afterwards, this is how I can blow past guys like Kobe Bryant one-on-one -on -one against LeBron James. It's spin number seven. It's like one of the fastest spin moves you can use in the game. Obviously using hesitation number three. Uh, secretly, my favorite hesitation is number four. This is the one I used to use back in uh, 2K14, uh, even 2K15 from time to time. If you just tap the right stick to the right or the left when the ball's in, you know, to the side of your ball hand, he does a, a very, very heavy hesitation. But obviously hesitation number three is more beneficial if you're a shooter. You know, if you're somebody who's uh, attacking the basket, you don't need to have this, but if you're a shooter, you want Hesitation 3. I'm an outside shooter. I like to use Hesitation 3. Do you have to use it? No. Do a lot of cheese balls use it with the total package? Absolutely. Um, you know, the total package cheese ball combinations, yes. But I use it mainly to get myself prepared for a jump shot. Because a lot of people use Hesitation 3, and then they do a deadly crossover right afterwards, which is really successful, but I don't really use it as much like that, per se. I like to kind of beat people with my dribble moves. Um, and I can't believe they made this hesitation actually take ankles or stumble people. I don't think that should be the case. All right, let's go into my size ups. Right now, I'm using size up number 21. Don't ask me why. My inside out move is Steph Curry. And the reason why is because he kind of carries the ball a little bit. You know, on he takes like three or four steps without dribbling. And I think defenders have a hard time timing 
when I'm gonna do the crossover. And sometimes I don't even do the crossover. I just do the move, and then I just burst forward. So this move is really, really hard to predict if you do it at the right time. I like this move a lot. A lot of people use the Jamal Crawford. I was one of the very first people to mention this, to use the Jamal Crawford. Uh, little did I know that it was going to get out of hand and get too crazy. And now, every time I, I look at my top 10 plays, this is all I see. Jamal Crawford, Jamal Crawford. The Jamal Crawford size up, along with a few other combinations, is extremely deadly. I choose not to use it because I just don't feel like I need to. And I don't want to fall into that category. I think my channel grows a lot faster when I'm separating myself from the pack. And I'm not, you know, just like everybody else, so to speak. Currently, my ISO size up crossover is Chris Paul. Uh, I tend to, I've actually dropped people with this. Like, I've actually had people fall to the ground using this move. And I think that's the only reason why I started using this, because I actually dropped people to the ground with it. Prior to using this one, I used to use the Ty Lawson. And this one really, it, it stumbles people, and I get ankles with it a lot. You guys have seen a lot of my videos where you get the people stumbling, or, you know, they look like they twerking. <laughs> You know, but to me, the Chris Paul, this one actually, it does the same thing as the Ty Lawson. It gets people twerking and whatever, losing their balance, snapping ankles, but you can actually make somebody fall to the ground. There's some animations that only make people stumble, and then there's some animations that make that can actually make people fall to the ground. And I have a few of those animations I can share with you guys, but I'm going to give you just the ones that I use. Currently, my ISO escape move is the Kyrie Irving. And this is because it has the same results, Isaiah Thomas. The Isaiah Thomas can make you stumble. This is my, this is the other escape that I that you guys have been seeing me use the, for the majority of my videos is the Isaiah Thomas. And a lot of you guys ask me, which one are you using? And I combo this with a crossover. This one can stumble your defender, but it'll never drop your defender. The Kyrie Irving, however, it has the same results. Notice how he goes behind the back and he gets the same distance as the Isaiah Thomas only this one he can actually drop me to the floor and this one was the very first escape move that I ever used when the game first came out I showed you guys this in my dribble tutorial telling you guys you can combo this one with any dribble in the game pretty much you just anything you're doing you can just break out of it and then do this and you can drop people to the ground with this one this one is the kind of this is one of those animations that don't just stumble defenders it actually drops them to the floor but another one of my favorite moves in the game is the Chris Paul. This is the move you use if you have two defenders trying to trying to D you up, especially in my career when the double team comes. Uh, if you're playing 1v1, it's almost impossible to guard this move. It does not break ankles. I have never seen a guy stumble from it. I've never seen a guy get dropped from it. But you can definitely use it to get a step ahead of your defender. Look at this crossover. Especially how he catches it in his left hand and then he bursts forward. The only problem is the ending animation where he stops. As long as you can find a way to like interrupt that, you will always be ahead of your defender. You can kind of just go right past them. Um, it doesn't really work as good, let's say, in the Pro-Am because once you get by him, then you have to face those, those centers and you've already stopped a little bit and you slow down. But on the park, 3v3, you know, 1v1, 2v2, in those situations, you're blowing by your defender with this move. So this move is a definite, uh, I give this move a definite thumbs up in my book. So that's pretty much it. You know, these are all the moves I'm using for right now. Um, a lot of you guys were asking me to put these out there. Um, I like using these moves because I don't have to be a cheese ball. I can just kind of pull off these moves without having people feel like they were cheated or cheesed when they played against me. I don't, I don't want that to be the excuse, you know? And I don't I don't use the speed boost glitch. I don't, I don't do things like that. I don't do the Jamal Crawford size ups and, you know, constantly spamming the, the step back moves. A lot of guys run at you doing snatch backs all game long, you know? I try not to do that. I don't wanna make that be my, my MO. I don't wanna seem like I'm trying so hard to break your ankles. A lot of people, when they come up against me, especially my subscribers, they force the issue, and they do get me, man. I've had my ankles broken many times by my, my own subscribers and my friends. Um, it happens. I mean, you, I, I'm not even the greatest player on defense, too. That's what's so funny about it. It's like, it can happen to me. Um, I just have to get better. Um, I'm working every day at it, and I just enjoy playing the game. Um, but I try my, my hardest not to over-abuse certain tactics because I just don't want to seem like... I don't want... I just don't like excuses. I don't like people telling me that I'm using certain 
cheesy tactics in order to get get one over on people. You know, I don't use the Lamarcus Aldridge release. I see so many people come out to the park just spamming that that quick release after a quick crossover or the guard one. You know, people use those the, those animations just to get a, a, a free look at the rim. And that's cool. I mean, you, you're trying to win. You know, but I just don't tend to use them because I don't feel like I need to. And even if I did, I really just wouldn't because I feel like I have more fun playing the game straight up. But it's 2K, man. They put the stuff in the game. And unfortunately, it's a problem for some people. Anyways, your boy Shake. I hope this video made some sense to you guys. Um, these are all my animations, my attributes, and you know my park, my park size ups and signature skills. If you guys enjoyed this video, smack that like tab to show your support. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will be back with some more of my career gameplays for you guys. Lead. Uh.